Welcome to today's video. Today I'm so excited about this video because it's another reading vlog, but not just any reading vlog because I'm going to be reading thrillers for a week, which I'm super excited about because as you guys probably know by now, thrillers are one of my favourite genre books. I love them and I have quite a few on my TBR so I'm really excited to get through some of them and hopefully find some of my new favourite thrillers. I have a feeling this is going to be a bit of a longer one, so grab a cup of tea, grab a snack, grab a book and come read with me. So the first book I've actually already started reading, I started reading it last night and that is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. I haven't read too much already, I'm only about 40 pages in. So this basically follows a friendship group that were at uni together and someone in this friendship group was murdered and somebody else was accused for their murder. It basically follows the main girl Jessica, it goes back and forth between now and back then. We are currently going to this 10 year reunion so everybody's coming back together but our main girl has an ulterior motive I think she wants to find out what happened to the girl that died so first impressions there is something not sitting right with me about the main girl and I don't know I can't quite pinpoint what it is but there's just something about her that just makes me feel a bit uneasy I think it's partly because she's quite obsessed with how she looks and how she comes across to people and she feels like she always has something to prove and she always wants to be the best at everything and I think she feels like she's been living in the shadows of these people that she was at uni with there's just something really unsettling about some of her thoughts that she has and I'm really interested to kind of see where they take her character and why she is the way she is. I don't know how to explain it because it's not that obvious, like it's very subtle, but there's just something that's just not sitting quite right with me and I don't know how to explain that. And as far as back then, it's set in freshman year at the minute, and we've only really seen them kind of meet each other for the first time and their first introductions to each other. So I don't know much about what happened back then yet. I'm really excited to find out. I've heard so much about this book and I've been wanting to read it for the longest time. So I'm just hoping it matches up to all the hype. and 40 pages in so that's a bit less than halfway. I'm really enjoying it so far but it's one of those where I just can't work out where the story is gonna go because everybody has these dark secrets and I feel like they're only getting revealed as we read along like they're not really things that you can guess which I do like because it's really keeping me on my toes and I'm reading it. I also think that the main girl is quite unlikable but she's meant to be which is the weird thing i don't think we're meant to like her it's really interesting to read something where the main character was kind of designed to not be likable <laughs> there's just something about her and about her vibe that's just really like you don't trust her and it's a bit unhinged <laughs> they're at the reunion sale and everybody's secrets are kind of just coming out one by one and I think we're kind of narrowing down to what happened to the girl that died. I'm really interested to see how it all plays out. But I just feel like there's a lot going on. There's a lot of characters and they all have their own secrets and their own background that's coming out. So basically the girl that's died, her brother has come to this reunion because he's basically spent the past 10 years working out what happened to his sister. And I think that he knows who did it. And it's just about outing them in front of everyone. It's really interesting. It definitely has that vibe of like rich people hiding all these secrets. It definitely has that vibe. <laughs> I'm about 200 pages in and the thing that I'm realising about this book is that every single one of these characters is slightly unhinged. 
<laughs> like every single one in some way or another is slightly unhinged. It's just like more and more seems to just come out about these characters. Everybody's got so many secrets. <laughs> I just feel like there's so much going on between them all and also behind the scenes and sort of everyone's dealing with their own thing that's making them behave a certain way or feel a certain way and it's almost like all of them feel like they don't fit in to some extent which is really interesting to read how they all sort of feel the same way but how they're acting on the surface because it's like they're all playing a part if that makes sense. morning got a bit of an update for you so i actually finished in my dreams i held a knife last night <sighs> where to even begin with this book I it at like 1am <laughs> i did not expect to finish it yesterday at all i thought i'd finish it today but i just couldn't put it down the ending i still haven't recovered from i would have done an update last night but it was one of those books that i just had to sit with for a bit and i was honestly sat there like what on earth have I just read? <laughs> what have I just read? So first of all, it really captured the whole prestigious, rich family, college vibe. And what's really interesting is that every single character was so flawed, but that's partly what made them so interesting. And they felt really thought out because of their flaws. The thing that's really interesting that I noticed was in this, no matter how rich you were, they all felt the same way underneath. And basically each character more or less got their own chapter in this at some point. It was so interesting to read how they actually felt about themselves compared to what they were showing on the outside to other people. And it was interesting to see that everybody had their own version of that. No matter how well off their family was or how confident they seemed on the outside they were pretty much all in the same boat at the end of the day. That was really interesting to see and to see how they all interacted with each other knowing how they felt about themselves. I also love how everything links together. I think it was so clever how this was done. Even down to like the school motto, which was we will change you body and soul. Like even that by itself, there's something so unsettling about that motto, but also how it kind of foreshadows what happens in the book and also the fortune from the fortune cookie that Coop gave Jess right at the start of the book I think it was in chapter three or something and I'm not gonna tell you what it said but it said something and that really stuck with me throughout the book and I thought about it at the end and I was like that's so crazy how that's kind of just all come back around and like all linked together. Just love little easter eggs like that throughout the book which seem minor at the time but there is a purpose for it and sort of like a hidden message in it. Like I said before every single one of these characters felt so thought out and even though majority of them were actually quite unlikable you just wanted to keep reading because of the way that they interacted with each other and how they all had different relationships with each other and knowing how they feel inside just to see on the outside how they interact with each other is so interesting to see. There's a real uneasy vibe in this book right from the very beginning which I liked because it made the twists and the information that came out even more believable and when it all just kind of came together it just made sense. And then the way that it ended, I've honestly not felt like that at the end of a thriller mystery book before. Just, like, <laughs> I don't even know. It was one of those where I was literally staring at a wall. Like, I, I don't even know what I've just read, kind of thing, but in a good way. So I'm rating this five stars. <laughs> it also has the potential to move up into the six star group if I think about it a lot more over the next few days and if it's one that my brain keeps coming back to but right now it's five star read. It just really captured a vibe that I've not read yet if that makes sense. <laughs> 
So today I'm going to move on to my next book. I'm thinking about reading The Hike by Lucy Clark, which you guys probably know by now that I read The Castaways last year and I rave about that book. I loved it. It was such a quick, fast paced read for me and that was written by Lucy Clark. And I think this is her new book out, which I'm so excited for. On TikTok as well, I think it was a Christmas book haul that I did. And I got quite a few of you guys saying that you'd read it and that you absolutely loved it. So that makes me really excited. I don't know that much about it. I'm kind of going in with no expectations and just to see where it takes me, which I'm quite excited about. And I'll update you, as always, throughout the book. <laughs> update. Yesterday I got about 100 pages in to the hike and it is so readable. It is so readable. I find myself just wanting to pick it up again and again. And it's one of those that even though there's a prologue that kind of hints at what's going on, I have no idea where this book is going to take us. So it follows the point of view of four women and so far we've got a bit of background for each one. There's one who's recently divorced and raising her daughter kind of by herself and isn't used to being away from her at all. Then there's one who looks like she has the ideal family but her and her husband are having problems. And there's one who's single and she doesn't really know what she's going to do with her life and she kind of envies the others that have this seemingly perfect life with families and husbands and everything. And the last one is the essentially a rock star and she basically goes touring with her band so we kind of get this background on all of them which just makes them seem more real and it's also a lot easier to keep track of who's who because I feel like with a lot of point of views sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming and you can't really remember who's who but this is done in a really good way where it's not confusing all and you just know who each person is and this group of women have been friends for basically ever and since they were 18 they've always been on a girls holiday of some sort every summer and they take it in turns to choose where they want to go and this time somebody picked Norway because they wanted to do this big hike up this mountain. So they've arrived in Norway, they've arrived at this lodge and a couple of weird things happen like there's some rumours going around and they're basically advised to not go on this hike because the weather can change really quickly in the mountains and it can be really dangerous and they decide to do it anyway. So where I'm at now it's on day one and they've just started their hike. So we're not very far into the hike but honestly, this book is so readable. Like, I don't want to put it down. <laughs> I'm going to try and get to around the 200 mark today. But I did that before with the last book and ended up finishing the whole thing. So <laughs> we shall see. So I'm a bit over 200 pages. And <sighs> they are in trouble. <laughs> they are in trouble. I think it's day two or three of the hike. I think it might be day three of the hike. And... There's basically been a big storm. They stumbled across something that shouldn't be there, that just something weird is going on. We don't really know much else, but I'm excited to find out. <laughs> this whole book, I've not really known where they're taking us with it or what's gonna happen. And there's a lot of sort of red herrings, which I like, because it just keeps you on your toes and just keep, makes you want to keep reading. I'm hopefully gonna finish this today, but we'll see how I get on, because I've got a lot of stuff to do but I'm hoping to finish it I really want to know what happens and yeah I will update you when something exciting happens So I just finished reading The Hike and I really enjoyed this. I love the way that Lucy Clark tells the story. Her writing is just so readable and so easy and fast paced. I really liked the whole setting of this one on the mountain and how it was very atmospheric and you really felt like you were there with them on the mountain. Everyone had their own backstory and something going on with them as well as them all linking together somehow which is really interesting to see how that was revealed. I will say there wasn't like a big twist as such. There was a twist but it wasn't like a jaw dropping twist if that makes sense. But there was quite a few small twists and turns that we took that were kind of unexpected and I'm still trying to work out how I feel about the ending without saying too much. I feel like they could have somehow avoided kind of what happened. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm going to give this a four stars. I was kind of struggling between 
three and a half four stars but I'm gonna go for four stars. I would really recommend Lucy Clark's books especially if you like more of the mystery type thrillers rather than the creepy like scary type thrillers. Although some parts of this I don't know whether it was just because I was reading it at like 2am <laughs> But some parts of this, I was literally like, why does it feel like somebody's watching me? Like, that is creepy. <laughs> but it is a lot more mystery thriller than anything. It's just a really solid read and one that I will definitely be recommending to people if they ask me for thrillers. Okay, so moving on to my next book. I have a couple options that I'm really stuck between. So let's choose one together. The first option is The Mother by T.M. Logan. I nearly chose this one before I read The Hike because it sounded really interesting. It's basically about a woman who's just been released from prison and she was the prime suspect in her husband's death. So her children have been taken away, her life's basically been taken away and she's just come out of prison. It's about her trying to get her life back together or deciding whether she wants to find out what really happened that night with her husband. It sounds really interesting, so that's option one. And then option two is Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. This has actually been on my TBR for so long. I love Lisa Jewell's writing. It's so fast paced and so quick to read. I've not actually heard anybody talking about this particular Lisa Jewell book. I'm really intrigued to see what it's like. I don't really know that much about what this one is about. What I got from the back is that it's about a girl who goes missing, who knows something, and a guy called Owen who's basically accused for her disappearance. I think I'm gonna go for this one just because I haven't read Elisa Jewell in so long. I'm just really in the mood for this type of thriller. It's literally nearly one in the morning and I am still reading this. I literally only set out to read 100 pages today because I just finished the hike and that was, I think I read over 100 pages to finish the hike. So I kind of didn't expect to read more than 100 pages of this one as well as that. I'm literally on page 166. This is the thing with Lisa Jewell's writing, it just makes you want to keep reading and it is so easy to read and I find that it's so quick to read as well. I just feel like I'm getting through it a lot quicker than other books. Lisa Jewell's books usually give me kind of that creepy thriller vibe and I've not really got that yet from this one. It does feel a lot like it's kind of setting it up and it's introducing quite a few characters so we kind of get to know their background and what they're doing in life. So I do think we're just kind of setting up for hopefully something big happening so it did feel like it was just setting up in the first 100 pages and we found out that the girl disappeared and now it's kind of picking up a bit more we're mainly following three different people at the minute and i'm really interested to see how they're all gonna link together because all of these jewels books link together somehow there's always a reason for a person or, or an event happening there's always a reason and it always links together at the end which is the part i love i love when it all makes sense and all the pieces just start to fall into place i love that there is also kind of an eerie sense to every single one of these characters, like something is just quite unsettling about them. I feel like the other Lisa Jewel books that I've read haven't had that, like everyone just seems like normal people going about their normal lives. But in this one, everyone just has a sort of uneasiness about them. But yeah, that's my little update. I'm gonna finish the chapter that I'm reading now and probably go to bed. And I will check back with you guys in the morning. Good night. <laughs>reading Invisible Girl yesterday and here are my thoughts. First half of this book I literally read in the first sitting. It's so quick and easy to read and that's one of the many things that I love about Lisa Jewell's books. I don't know what it was about this one but it just didn't feel like Lisa Jewell's other books. I really don't know how to explain it because I can't quite pinpoint what it is about it. I don't know whether it's the characters because all the characters in this had something a bit weird about them. And I feel like Lisa Jewell's characters are usually just normal people going about their ordinary lives and then something happens to them. Whereas this felt like it was already happening and we were just going into this world and they were all a bit weird in their own way. I'm going to explain a bit about what the book's actually about because I feel like I didn't really do that earlier on. It basically follows a girl called Sapphire and something really terrible happened to her when she was 10 years old and she went to therapy about it. And her therapist kind of signed her off earlier than she wanted. So she decided to kind of just follow him around because she felt like she needed him 
in her life to some extent. So we follow her doing that and then we also follow the therapist and his wife and their family. And then across the road from them is a guy called Owen who is a bit of a loner. He just keeps himself to himself. He's never really had like a relationship or anything. And he lives across the road from this family. And then Sapa disappears and Owen gets blamed for her disappearance. So these events are just kind of unfolding with each chapter and we're just kind of putting pieces together about what's actually happened to Sapphire and how all three stories kind of link together. It was a really interesting read and I did enjoy reading it. What I will say is that the endings just seemed very like everything's just come to light and we've just solved it now and that's that. Usually in these adorable books there's like a big twist at the end or something you didn't really see coming but there was a, I didn't find that there was that in this book. I found it all very predictable but that's not a bad thing and I did really enjoy it. I just think that there wasn't like a big twist at the end. So overall I'm rating this a three stars. It's a very solid mystery thriller and I did really enjoy reading it and I'm glad that I did. And that brings us to the end of my week of reading thrillers. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for coming along with me and I will see you in my next one.